whooping 55% of students fail CompTIA A plus exam on their first try. And obviously, if you're preparing for CompTIA A plus, it's very important to you for, to pass this exam on your first attempt. There are several reasons for that. And first and foremost, because you obviously paid for the voucher, you prepared for the exam, you did some practice tests, read some books, and you expect to pass it. And the second important reason for you to expect to pass it is that this is the very first, well, in most of the cases, this is the first exam in the IT industry that you take. So on this exam depends whether you sort of will continue your efforts to expand or endorse on your career in IT industry or you will think that no, IT industry is not for me. That's why psychologically it's very important for people to be able to pass for CompTIA Plus on their first attempt or at least be very motivated to continue preparing for it even if they have not passed it on their first attempt. So imagine if it's not the first certification in your IT industry, for example, you're passing Security Plus or it's not your first cloud certification and etc. Then your fail in CompTIA A Plus would not affect you as if it's when it's your first certification in the IT industry because this will trigger several unconscious thoughts such as like maybe IT industry is not for me maybe I'm not where I want to be maybe it's very hard maybe I don't have the intelligence I don't have the intellectual capacity to pass the exam whereas the other exams the next exams if you fail them you'll be like okay, I haven't prepared enough, I will prepare better and do better next time. So that's why many people actually want to pass CompTIA A plus on their first time. But as I said, 55% of those who are taking the exam the first time, around 55%, they fail the exam. And actually I was one of them. I failed my first core one exam on A plus and I had many doubts if even this industry is for me, if I will be able to pass next exams if I take them. So I had so many unconscious and conscious thoughts like doubting myself and it obviously reduced my self-confidence by a lot and this was the only by the way exam that I failed so far among different certifications that I have embarked on. That's why many people keep asking me what resources I use for CompTIA A plus preparation. And I honestly thought that I have already filmed a video about resources that I used for A plus preparation, but apparently I haven't when I checked. So this is my bad. And that's why I decided to put together this video and share with you what I would do differently, what resources I have used second time, what resources I have been using the first time. But first things first, I prepared this sketch. I really hope that you're gonna see something here. It's the main difference that I noticed when I failed the CompTIA exam and then when I passed it. So um, the first time when I failed it, I had 60% of theory in my pre preparation and 40% of practice. And the second time when I passed it, I had 40% of theory and 60% of practice. And I think this was the main reason why I failed the exam the first time. When we're embarking on different books on the CompTIA A plus topic, and one of them is Mike Mayer's book, they are very interesting and they are very big, obviously. Mike Mayer's book was like this. And they were for both cores. It is very hard to actually grasp the main contents from there. For example, the book sometimes elaborates on where RAM is coming from, where SSDs are coming from, where different parts of hardware are coming from. And while it's really interesting for us to know the history, the background of every technology, it's really good to have sort of the logical connections between different concepts that we're learning. It's very hard to remember it all and actually to know for sure what we should use for the exam. That's why whenever I changed the book, I read the whole Mike Mayer's book, which gave me a very good background of concepts. But this was the only book that I read for preparation to my exam. I also was listening to Professor Messer's um, lectures a lot. And I thought that, okay, theoretically I'm ready. Why would I take any practice tests? So I limited my practice tests to those that are on end chapter ends of Mike Mayer's book. And I know it was one of the most stupid decisions I've ever made in my life. So that's why I obviously failed my first core one exam. It was very hard time for me and then I decided that yes, I will buy another voucher and I will keep on trying to pass it on the second time. 
For the second time, I realized that there are more practice tests, so that I have to do practice tests because the tests that I saw on exam, well, even if I knew everything theoretically, it was like, oh my God, what's that? This is, this is unbelievable because some of the technology was not like the normal technology names that I would read in the books. They were different brands, although the CompTIA is not vendor specific exam body, they still included the names of different brands, obviously, because these brands were big enough to name them in the, on the exam. And on my second attempt, I changed my strategy overall. I used another book, Exam Cram for A plus preparation. The book was uh, thinner than the Mike Myers book and it had the key concepts that I need to know. So it didn't include the whole history, it didn't have as many pictures, as many different diagrams like Mike Myers book had, but it had more the general and on-spot information that I need for the exam. And I read the book and along with the book I was doing the chapter and practice test and that's when I discovered Jason Dion through Facebook groups that um, many people actually said that they're his exam questions, practice exams really help to pass the exam. So I bought his course on Udemy and started doing his practice exams. But that was not end. I would do all practice exams I could possibly find. For example, I bought Professor Messer's practice exams to do. I, As I said, I was doing Jason Dion's practice exams. I was doing Mike Mayer's practice exams on Udemy. Whatever practice exams I could find, I was doing them. And this helped me a lot. And especially when I was going through the results, of these practice exams, I would read through the questions that I was right on. For example, even my answer was correct answer, but I flagged this question to review in the future. I would still review that question for sure because it was important for me to understand. Well, even if there was something that was unclear to me, it was important to me for to understand what that was. And obviously, I was going through the questions that were incorrect. And when I saw that I built, I really built my confidence throughout doing these practice exams, I was able to think about buying another voucher and going for the exam again. And that's what I did. On my second attempt for core one, I passed the core one. And when I used the same strategy to, to prepare for core two, I passed the core two on my first attempt. So what was different? Let's summarize. I used another book that is more on point and contains less information. I in no way discourage you from using bigger books, but if it's only if you have a bit more time frame to prepare for the exam and obviously some people need the background of everything in order to feel more confident. I'm one of them by the way, it, the background of knowing how RAM originated, how TCP UDP originated really helps me to understand the concepts better but if you're on a shorter time frame obviously it's better if you take the book that has more on point information. Second thing that I did was um, I used the practice exams wherever I could so I googled for all practice exams available for A+, whether people like them or not, I was just doing and going through like hundreds of practice questions in order to prepare for the exam because it's a better way to memorize information. Not only memorize but understand since it has different options for every question and you can test yourself whether your understanding of the concept is right or wrong. And last but not least, it's very important to read through the objectives many many times and actually ask yourself, do I understand this concept? And for example, there is TCP UDP and you think that, okay, I read this in Mike Mayer's book, I listened about this on Professor Messer's um, videos on YouTube and then I did some tests about it, but I still don't understand the concept, but I will be fine, I will just memorize what they mean. Don't do that, please. If you see any concept that you are not sure about, make sure you go on the internet, you go on YouTube, you go on Google and you read and read and watch videos until you understand the concept. Because the moment you understand it, it will help you to answer the scenario based questions. For example, many scenario based questions of CompTIA are really cheeky. So they try to sort of, well, present the answers in a way that you can sort of mistakenly choose the answer that isn't correct. And that's why you need to have a solid idea of what each technology does, at least high level idea, but the most important thing is that you need to understand it. For example, if you don't understand any concept, 
let's say TCP IP, make sure you understand it. You, you understand all the concepts listed in objectives before you embark on the exam. So if you incorporate more practice into your preparation, this will also mean that you will be more theoretically adept because through practice, through going through correct and incorrect answers in your multiple choice questions, you will get a better idea of concepts and you will be feeling more confident for the exam. Some people who already feel like not some people but if you already feel that you are ready for the exam it means that you're scoring well on Jason Dion's practice exams you're scoring well on Mike Mayer's practice exams there is also the exam practice questions pack from Professor Mayer that I bought for my CompTIA A+, and I found them really nice because they had some sort of deeper level questions, although they were not quite the reflection of what I saw on the exam, sorry Professor Mayer, but they uh, provide you with deeper overview of the concepts and it's certainly more interesting to embark on because the scenarios are sort of more convoluted and the performance questions of these practice exams are really nice too. So I honestly enjoyed doing the practice exams, practice questions provided by Professor Messer. That's why I bought them too. So incorporate as much tests in your practice, like practice part of your preparation as I as shown here. So to make it like sort of 60% of your prepar overall preparation and make sure that you have key concepts. You read at least one book or if you're not a book person, maybe try sort of listening to a course about CompTIA A+, just to have an overall idea of the concepts covered in objectives. And at the end, go through objectives many, many times to make sure that you understand all the concepts and you will do just well. I really hope that you will be among those 45% that pass CompTIA A+, exam on the first time and you will not be like me who failed her core plus the first attempt. That's why I decided to come up with this video in order to provide you with more information about the resources that I used. If you consider some resource that I haven't mentioned but to be very useful for CompTIA A plus preparation, please don't forget to mention that in the comment section down below so that more people see that resource. Thank you very much for being with me today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that like button. Have a nice day. Bye.